Welcome to part two of our conversation with Rick Hale on The Grave Talks. I have dreams sometimes, and I've talked about this on the shows, where I, it's been a while, um, and I think it was myself putting myself in these situations, uh, you know, subconsciously because I was very unhappy, but I would be in a dream state. I was me, but everything around me, all the people around me, all the, the family I had, the interactions, the friends, they weren't real. Like I never met these people. They weren't my family in real life, but in the, in the dream state, and it was just like normal everyday life. It's like, I'm living in this house and this is completely normal. And in the dream state, I had memories of being in that house and memories of living there and, and you know, holidays and this and that. And the people that I was with had memories of them too. Just like I would of the living that are in my real world. And I'd wake up and I go, what the hell was that? I mean, there would be a moment where I'd wake up and go, am I married? Do I have kids? Where the hell am I? And I was kind of transitioning like, oh yeah, of course, here I am and this is that. But my mind would literally be like transferring out of this whole other dimension or world and then back to this one. And I I, I don't recognize anybody in these dream states. It, it, it's not like it's a quantum leap and I'm going back to 1964 reliving something. It's always current today times, but it's almost as if I'm like, living a totally different life and I'm in control of it. It's not like a rail ride where I'm just on there and seeing what happens. Yeah, it's just but it's like it's a completely different place. But I, I the weirdest part is having the memories. It's not just I'm confused. Who are these people? It's this is normal. This is everyday life. And I don't realize how bizarre it is until I snap out of it. And so I guess maybe that thought would be if somebody in that state came to me and said, oh, by the way, these are not really your family. Uh, you, uh, he got this over there. I'm like, oh yeah, of course I do. But I, it would take that person to get to me and say that for me to even realize it. Like it just, it's not there. It's a void in some, some of these dreams. You know, some people might say that uh, that's either a uh, past life and shooting on present times, or you are, ex- you are touching a, uh, parallel universe. So we're talking like multiverse Tony here, Mm -hmm. you know, you're kind of like seeing this other reality where it's still you, obviously, but all the different choices that you made in life led to these people being part of your life. But had I made a different choice, it would be these. So kind of like the the Nicolas Cage movie, The Family Man. almost. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, And I I think that that's, you know, people always talk about um, the, the Mandela effect. Yeah. You know, like I have a vivid memory of watching um, Sinbad <laughs> play a genie. Sure. I have a, we I have all a do. vivid memory. Yes. Yeah. I have a vivid memory of watching this movie with my nephew, who was maybe five or six years old at the time. And it's like, this movie never actually existed. It's like, what the hell are you talking about? Because I remember seeing this. But yeah, I think that sometimes... Uh, especially in our sleep state, we're able to um, interact or slightly touch that parallel self. So does that mean, because an example like that, which is a great one, the, the, what was it? The, the Sinbad movie was Shazam, right? That was Shazam Shazam was the movie that never existed. Um, When, when we have that, does that, and so many people collectively have that, does Mm -hmm. that mean that, we all hit this pair, the same parallel universe. Like this parallel universe is not unique to us. And it's not just the one that I jump to. It's the one that everyone jumps to. And that's how we have things like that. That seem to happen where we all collectively. Yeah. Would have these reactions. Uh, but in our reality, there's no record of these things ever existing. Yeah, exactly. And I, and I, I just want to let people know I am, by no means a theoretical physicist. I'm just a cat with a high school diploma. Mm-hmm. I, I have no um, experience in, in, with, with this kind of thing. But, you know, I know from things that I've read and I know from things that I've spoken to, you know, with people about, you know, that they do experience these things and they don't understand them because it's not part of their everyday experience. You know, like with your experience or me thinking that Shazam 
is a real movie that I watched with my, uh, or whatever it was called, mm -hmm. watched with my nephew. Um, so it's like, I will not ever pretend to be something that I'm not. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I'm not an expert on these things. All I know is, is stories that I've heard from people. So what is that then, though? These memories that we have of like that, where you're watching this with your nephew, did that occur in our reality and then somehow it got erased from our current reality or was it a dream that you had back in that day that you were watching this movie with your nephew on a parallel universe and that's the memory that you're pulling up probably because a lot of people they have these these weird memories that they call the mandela effect mm -hmm. you know uh, like for example, it's not the Berenstain Bears; it's the Berenstein Bears or Berenstein. Bears. It, it, yeah, yeah, Berenstein. Because I was calling Berenstein, and the Berenstein yeah. is what it. It's like, huh? Yeah, it's Berenstein. But, Bears. but did we all just mispronounce that one? <laughs> was that that simply the effect of that one, and we were too young to really it's, read? <laughs> it's possible, but yeah, I mean, I think that that you know, with like your dream and my experience with, uh, you know, watching Sinbad with play a, a, yeah. a genie very badly, I might add, with my nephew. Yeah. You know, I do think that this is, you know, part of the human experience. And the human experience really does um, incorporate the strange and unusual in it mm -hmm. in all of its many wonderful and beautiful facets. It's interesting. It, it makes me wonder if on the other side, when someone's over there, they finally get to watch Shazam again. And it's like, <laughs> yes, there you go. Or you get to the, the pearly gates. It's like, Welcome. Do you have any questions? Shazam. What's the fucking deal with Shazam? God, I hope not. <laughs> I really did. Hey, the first question I have, it's like you have all the infinite wisdom. You want like Shazam. What the hell's the deal? What, what, what was that? I just want to know. <laughs> you know, I, I, I hope that the first people I meet up there are, uh, Sinbad Ian Curtis of <laughs> Joy Division and Peter Steele of Typo Negative, because those are the guys I want to hang out with for all eternity. So. Yeah. Hopefully not watching bad Sinbad movies. Does everyone, and this is just, you know, all conjecture and opinion, but you had said earlier, you know, the, if someone's soul survives the death of the body and then they're mm -hmm. haunting, uh, you know, here, does everyone's soul survive the death of the body? Uh, or or, or what, what, what does it, what do you mean by that? I, I do believe that um, a part of us does move on does does live you know they always they always say um that energy can never be created or you know destroyed, destroyed whatever yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying but you know can only be changed so i think that that's what you know we deal with as well but why do some people when they die when their body expires why do they move on to the great hereafter well some some people stay um, you know, and there are many theories about that that have been around in psychical research and parapsychology since the very beginning of organized um, paranormal investigation and research. Sure. Uh, some people, they don't know they're dead or they have a message they need to get across or, you know, something, you know, some kind of attachment ties them to this world. All of those things could be right and all of those things could be wrong. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that that's why it's like you can't I, I know that it's really popular to say right now you can't be an expert in this. But as far as life, death and the afterlife go, I'm going to go ahead and agree with that. Yeah, because at the end of the day, we don't know sure. why people stay here. We can only uh, speculate. Yeah. If, if it is a system of you go to a higher place, whether it be a heaven uh, or a hell or that would be a lower place. Um, and then some kind of chill. It's like, well, why? What, what's this chilling? Why are we hanging out here still? And, and you know, do we get to that next place or do we get recycled again? And then it's, you know, th there's just so many questions and so many choose your own adventure pages in this book that it's, it, yeah, you never really know the answer. Right. Yeah, I, I, I have a belief in reincarnation. And that's only because... From a, from the time that I was a little kid to about the time I was 18 years old, I had this weird reoccurring dream of a World War I British soldier running in a trench. And all of a sudden, he falls forward face first into a huge puddle of water and dies. Mm -hmm. 
um, talking to a psychic friend of mine, uh, again, Nancy Laporta, she said what that probably is, is that is a past life. Of you? Of me. And you were watching yourself. You you were watching yourself fall into this puddle. No, I was watching this World War I British soldier. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. And she said that that was probably a past life of me. She says that he was shot in the back. Mm -hmm. while running in this ditch and he fell face forward into this huge puddle of water. And it's not the bullet that killed him. It was, he drowned in this puddle of water. And she says that explains my fear of water. Like I can of course drink it and bathe in it, but my wife and my son practically have to beg me to get into a pool or beg me to get into uh, the ocean or a lake or whatever, Mm -hmm. because I am terrified of water. That's interesting where something like that, that we would be a very traumatic experience and a traumatic way to go. Mm -hmm. Uh, Is that what you believe may be the explanation sometimes why sometimes we have these phobias of things that in our current lifetime, we had no reason to have uh, the traumatic reaction to some things like you you never almost drowned as a child or something you just had someone a healthy relationship with water but then yeah. why would you have the this this traumatic reaction to it is that because it's kind of ingrained in us through dna or or having a past life or something like that i do believe that that i mean for i i can only speak for myself yeah but what? that's that's why i do believe that i do that I am afraid of water. Like you said, yeah. I've never drowned. I never came close to drowning yeah. as a child. I never had a traumatic experience like that. Um, but, you know, Nancy is a medium and psychic that I trust and I believe in her ability. And if she says that this is why I'm afraid of water and I had these dreams until I was 18 years old, um, she says the reason I had them until I was 18 and they stopped at 18 because this young man was 18 when he died. So the kind of parallel line there of experiences and relatable experiences ends. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What, so, you know, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to no, say, what, what about what about the idea of DNA memory and that maybe being someone, you know, from your lineage that witnessed that, that saw that. And then it's you got the visualization of it. Sometimes we get instinctual things that, that come along. I mean, we evolve, animals evolve, people evolve physically and, and things of that nature over many a generations uh, based on the living conditions and the environments that, that previous generations have dealt with. Um, could that be something like that too, where it's, it's literally a little snippet of, of a former of, uh, you know, relative that, that in your lineage would have had that experience. You know, the only thing that I could say for myself, probably not for me, because my family has been in the United States since colonial times. They came from Mm -hmm. Ireland in 1645. So, you know, I can't really um, say that that is why for me. It might be the case for somebody else, but Mm -hmm. really not for me, because my family has always been in the the United States before it was the United States. The other thing on that, and I'm not saying that reincarnation is not real. I think that's certainly a possibility with all this, um, would be what I kind of call downloads, where you get the snippet. You, you Basically, the YouTube clip has been sent to you by mm-hmm. somebody else, by somebody who was hanging out with you uh, for those first 18 years of your life. And they were trying to get a message through you. And it, it ended up coming across as almost like this was your memory. But it was really them just kind of, here you go. Do what you will with it. Do you think that's a thing too? It's possible for some other people. Like I yeah. said, I can only speak to my own experience sure. with this and this being the reoccurring dream. Um, Nancy also tells me that this is why I have this. Um, I, I've always wanted to go to the United Kingdom, mm-hmm. but I have a very strong pull towards it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I write for spooky and I have made, I have made it my business to um, study uh, haunted places and uh, legends of the United Kingdom in Ireland. And uh, so I have like this very strong pull mm-hmm. towards that. Nancy has always told me the reason you had that strong pull is, is because this young man wants to go home. Mm-hmm. 
So that's when it comes. Yeah. When it, when it comes to that, I can only speak to my own experience. I can't speak to the experience of others. Sure. Sure. I have an, in, my, my daughter, um, who's now nine, uh, when, uh, one day, uh, we we're just brushing teeth or she was brushing her teeth and she just started talking very matter of factly. She was like two at the time. I actually have this on tape. Um, mm-hmm. and she started saying, uh, uh, dad, I died once. Huh? Like oh. just very, like we're talking about, I don't know, Dora the Explorer or something previously. Mm-hmm. And then suddenly it's dad. I died once. It's like, these are concepts we really, hadn't tackled much up until this point, even with what I do, I still didn't like expose her that much to it. Um, yeah. but, um, I'm like, what? And I didn't go like, Oh, you're crazy. I'm like, tell me about that. And she's like, I was in a rocket ship and it caught on fire. And she was using terms that were more than just rocket ship. She was like using like technical terms. I'm like, how the hell does she know that word? And, wow. um, and she said, it caught fire and there was, um, like a malfunction and she was stuck in there and there was a fire and she died. And Whoa. I was just, and she stuck with that story for a, a couple sessions of brushing her teeth. And then it was kind of gone. Now we had gone to uh, a, uh, a space museum, not that far uh, before this. She did not go and see an exhibit, which was in there, which actually was of two astronauts who died. Uh, the, the capsule that, they burned in was actually in the museum. Um, but we didn't go down that aisle cause I knew it would be kind of, you know, and she's two. So we, she didn't see it. Didn't even talk here. We didn't talk about it. It was never, but basically this relic was in that building. And it was shortly mm-hmm. after that, that she had, she was telling me these stories and she, from a very young age, and I know humans instinctually have a fear of fire. She mm-hmm. did not like fire in any way, shape, or form. If we safely had a candle burning, she was the first to go find the cover and to put it out or to blow it out. She did not like fire whatsoever. And it was weird because she's ever, never had a trauma with fire, never seen fire out of control, never anything negative. But she had that innate fear, almost like you had for water, about flames and, and, and fire. And I was always wondering, is this a... Uh, past life is this something that kind of attached and was kind of giving her these you know messages or these these visions and she's just kind of reciting them because she's seeing this in her mind uh but it was very uh it was spooky yeah that is it's really quite possible I, I, she was on a spaceship a rocket and um w- was she born i'm assuming she was born after the uh the uh, challenger oh yeah exploded. yeah yeah Oh. Yeah, she huh. was she was born in 12, 2012. So and you got to wonder, maybe she's a reincarnation of one of the people. I know. The- I mean, I, I wondered that. And and we actually um, I mean, this was years ago. But when we uh, about last year, we went to Kennedy Space Center and walked around and I was I didn't say anything, but I was curious as to if she would have any sort of emotional reaction to anything. And we mm-hmm. literally walked up and walked by the Challenger pieces, the um the, the windshield that's in there, a large piece of it uh, on the side. And I got nothing. I got no um, no reaction whatsoever. But again, she doesn't remember even talking about this and, and anything like that. But back then, it would have been interesting to put her near that to see what the emotional response would have been. Yeah, really. Wow. That's that is that's intense. Yeah. But a lot of people, they hear that all the time from young kids. And, you know, the yeah. only explanation is, is they, they are experiencing a past life. That wraps up our conversation with Rick. A big thank you to him for sharing his experiences and thoughts with us on today's program. And thank you to you. We could not do this without you. Until next time, for all of us at the Grave Talks, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.